Ask yourself one simple question now as we begin this video. What do I want right now? There are as many different answers to this question as there are people on the earth. Now ask yourself a new question. What is the number one thing I want out of life? This question may sound similar, but it is very different. The first question, what do I want right now, has many different answers. Pretty much everybody wants something at any given time. These wishes are numerous and fleeting, ranging from a favorite thing to eat, to taking a nap, to going somewhere fun. These desires are usually fairly temporary, and are coupled with a temporary pleasure upon their fulfillment, or a temporary discomfort or annoyance when they are denied. The second question, what is the number one thing I want out of life, is a completely different question. Answers to this question tend to vary far less, and generally tend to correlate around the same thing, to be happy and fulfilled in life. In a religious context, some will wish for things that correlate to experiencing the same state in the afterlife. Whether your number one desire is to find inner peace, master a skill, climb the corporate ladder, or to meet the love of your life, you desire these things because you believe that they will lead you to a state where you will be happy and fulfilled. Turns out that we as human beings are generally not very good at identifying what we really want. Perhaps this is because we as a species are almost too self-aware. Perhaps it is because we are told by others what we ought to want. Whatever the reason, many of us have learned to chase after some goal which we feel will bring us happiness, instead of chasing after happiness itself. The question of what exactly brings true happiness is a bit of a conundrum. In fact, humanity has been trying to pin the answer down for thousands of years. Early humans were hunter-gatherers. Their daily survival rested on the endless activity of gathering food, seeking shelter, fashioning clothing and tools, and migrating with the food source. We don't really have any sort of record as to what these people considered to be their secret of happiness because it seems nobody had the time or means of writing it down. It was only as civilization began that people had the time or means to be asking such questions at all and thus we see the birth of ancient and modern philosophy. Since then, philosophies from all over the world sprang up in an attempt to address the basal questions of humanity and civilization. And that brings us to a Greek philosopher named Epicurus. Epicurus, contrary to many philosophers of the time, theorized that happiness comes from pleasure, pleasure being defined simply as the absence of pain. He differentiated between the many different pleasures available to the citizen of his day, insisting that not all pleasures are to be treated equally. For example, the pleasure of being satisfied at the end of a meal can be reached by eating a meal. Once you are full, you are full, and that is the end of that. However, pleasures like money or fame are infinite and have no natural limit. Therefore, a person seeking the pleasure of money or fame will always feel like he has not got enough and thus will never be satisfied. Epicurus also acknowledged that pleasures are to be enjoyed in moderation and not in excess in order to be actually pleasurable and not painful. A person may enjoy the pleasure of a well-cooked meal, but overeating will cause pain and therefore inhibit pleasure. Therefore, a large part of Epicurus's recipe for a happy and fulfilling life was to enjoy life's simple pleasures and not to partake of them to excess. The idea of finding happiness in simplicity was not only to be found in ancient Greece, however. Only around a century prior to Epicurus, the groundwork of Taoism was being laid in ancient China. The Tao Te Ching is said to have been written around the 4th century BC, and offers insight on this question of how happiness and desire interact. Those whose desires are few get them. Those whose desires are great go astray. While we don't know much about Lao Tzu, the ancient text's alleged author, we know that he and Epicurus agreed on at least one thing. Happiness does not come from getting everything you think you want. Actually, the Taoist prescription for dissatisfaction in life is to learn to want very little. 
This doesn't mean, of course, that we should never make goals, but it does mean we should be open to our goals changing, and it does help to examine our goals through a Taoist lens. Ask yourself, what are your goals, and will they really make you happy? What is the difference you expect this goal to make in your life? Sometimes the universe has a way of giving us exactly what we want in a way that we never expected. Sometimes what we think will make us happy is the very thing that is holding us back from the happiness we seek. I generally avoid sharing personal experiences in the making of these videos, but I think perhaps an anecdote from my own life will help to illustrate this concept. I was lucky enough to have the experience of living in a foreign country for two years when I was old enough to move away from home. I felt that this experience greatly broadened my understanding of and appreciation for people and the world outside of a small rural town I grew up in. Upon my return home, I swore to myself that I would never date or marry anyone from my hometown, and consequently my first girlfriend in college was from a country far away from the United States. After a month of dating, it became quite clear to both of us that this was not the relationship we wanted to be in, and we mutually decided to break it off. At the time, one of my best friends was a girl from my hometown that I had gone to school with. We spent a lot of time together during this time, and several months later discovered we were actually very much in love. We've now been happily married for several years. When I returned home from living abroad, I thought, what I wanted was a partner from a foreign country. Looking back years later, I now realize that what I actually wanted was a partner who I found interesting and exciting, with a certain depth of personality which I had come to assume didn't exist in my small, rural hometown. As it turns out, my wife had far more of these attributes than the person I had previously dated. If I had held tightly to what I thought I wanted, I might have missed out on the much more compatible mate that fate had waiting for me. Life can seem challenging at times, and it certainly is. But the truth is that we often make things much harder for ourselves than they need to be. When we make up rules for ourselves for what our life has to look like, we close the doors to other opportunities that might have made us happier in the long term. If we can learn to detach ourselves from our own desires, we will most often find that we end up with exactly what we need anyway. This is not only a principle of Taoism, but a principle of a peaceful life.